All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan, and welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Mike Bowers. Mike is Chief Architect at Faircom with over 35 years of experience in software development and architecture. His wealth of knowledge extends to topics like database revolution, manufacturing 4.0, the industrial internet of things, edge computing, and data integration. So, Mike, welcome to the show. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Lisa. So share with us a little bit about your background and what led you to doing what you're doing with Faircom. Yeah, I've been presenting at conferences for decades now on the database revolution. And Faircom is a database company for the last 40 years. They've been a database company selling database software. You may not have heard of Faircom because it's an embedded database and it's embedded in, it might it's probably embedded in your phone, it's in, embedded in satellites embedded in networks, like every phone call you make on Verizon, for example, is going through the database. But, you know, we never did. We were an engineering company. We never advertised. And I never really knew much about Faircom either, but they saw me at the conferences talking about a new kind of database technology that no one has really implemented yet. And um, they liked the ideas and they wanted to, so they recruited me to go build that technology into Faircom. When I got to Faircom, we started building that in. And then I there also realized that since we're an embedded database, the manufacturing world really needs to capture data. And they need to capture data in the equipment. They need to capture it on the manufacturing floor. And unlike IT, which is trying to go to the cloud and stick everything servers up on distant data centers, manufacturing doesn't want to do that because... You can't afford the downtime. If you're if the cloud goes down, if your network connection to the cloud goes down, if it becomes intermittent, you can stop your manufacturing floor. You can stop processes dead. And you can't afford that. So you need to run locally. And that's where the Faircom database is really good. So prior to my being hired by Faircom, they started selling the product to manufacturers as a database platform. And I have a large extensive background in manufacturing. I was I worked in the silicon industry. I wore the bunny suits wow. in tail commercials. And so I've been in, I've been done all that. I worked in the automotive industry at uh, Freightliner, automating vehicles. And in fact, the Sprinter van, um, they're the computer that runs that Sprinter van. There's a, it's actually a computer that runs the whole van. You push on the gas, it doesn't physically um, cause the fuel to be injected, it tells the computer that you want to inject fuel and the computer does all the injection. And so that whole computer system, I wrote the compiler, the language, everything that programs that van. So that van is, is really proud of that one. It was a lot of fun. And I worked in the agriculture industry with big, huge farm equipment that picks up one ton bales, compresses these bales, and you just push a button and it does all the work. And so it's robotics and automation. So I spent a lot of my career in manufacturing, and then I spent a lot of my career in the database industry and software development. I wrote a book on HTML and CSS that's still published out there. So I've done a lot of different things. And Vericom hired me for database, but then we realized, wow, they're really, Vericom is really trying to get into the manufacturing world. And because we have a really perfect product for that, from a database perspective, I've done all this integration work in factories, and I realized factories really struggle with integration costs. It's so expensive to hire people like me, which is what I did, is to go into factory and automate the factory. And to, to go to the proprietary protocols on this machine, write the drivers to go extract the data, to go put them into your manufacturing execution system or your SCADA systems or your ERP systems. And all that's point-to-point -point development work. And I had spent a lot of time in my career building integration systems that were more generic. So when I was hired by Faircom, I realized there's an opportunity to solve two problems at once. Build this new revolutionary database technology and make it an integration platform at the same time. Because I've been working on both problems my entire career. So it turned out to be 
even better than I thought coming to Faircom because I was excited to come to Faircom for the database side. And then I realized, wow, I get to do this other integration solution that I've been working on for several decades. And, and my last job was at a large multi-billion dollar international corporation. And I was the, the data architect. It was the head data architect for that entire organization with thousands of developers. And they needed integration for everything. We had, like I said, thousands of developers integrating data. And so I designed a new integration platform because we didn't have anything that would work out of the box. We bought everything. We had products from IBM and Oracle and you name the big companies, Microsoft. We had them all, but none of them could integrate in all the ways we needed. So when I came to Faircom, I started building a new platform for Faircom. We call it the IoT platform. It's an integration hub. And the idea is to integrate data coming from machines in the factory and bring it into a standard format. JSON is the standard format. And I see transform the JSON to be what the factory needs to shape the data the way they need it. So it's plug and play and, and leverage technologies like MQTT and OPC UA as universal protocols in the factory. And then get the data into JSON from all of these protocols, whether it's Modbus or it's OBC or MQTT, or it's it could be Siemens S7, or it could be Allen Bradley's Ethernet IP, you name it. There's hundreds of protocols, right? You got to get data out of those protocols into a standard universal format. Some people call it a universal or a uniform namespace. Um, but the idea is a standard format. And once you get your data into a standard format, format like JSON, and then you shape the data in a standard way so that you can plug and play your equipment, then you can dramatically introduce your manufacturing costs. You can get the data out of the equipment and it can become a point click operation. Instead of hiring someone like me and paying me exorbitant fees, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I didn't mind as the developer, but you yeah. know, the factory <laughs> didn't like it. And the, but you pay millions of dollars to grab this data from these from the equipment. And then you're limited to whatever you whatever the developer got for you. And later you go, I've got a new version of the equipment. Can you get this extra data? Oh, sure. For a nice hefty price tag, $100,000 or $50,000, depending on what you're doing. And so you're limited on getting the data out of the equipment. And then you're limited on, oh, I'll write a custom code to go get it into my manufacturing execution system. And I write special code to do that. And it's a point-to-point -point solution. But I need it to go somewhere else now. I want it to go to the cloud. I want it to go to the SCADA system. I want it to go over here to this operation software we just purchased. And then you're like, that's more custom software development work. And it and so manufacturers are stuck in this quagmire of proprietary protocols, custom software development work. And, and it limits them from getting the data that they need to improve their manufacturing processes. Some people say data is the new currency. And I think that's true. Data is like money. And if you if you can't get the money out of, if you can't get the data out of your equipment, you're not, you're limited in the money you're getting from your equipment, your value you're getting from the equipment. And so that was what I came to Faircom to do is build a new database technology. And I've also, in, in addition, built a whole new integration platform where you point and click and data flows in these universal formats so you can have a plug and play factory. So for people who aren't, who don't really understand all of these different acronyms that, oh, that yeah. people <laughs> in the, the integration field understand, so you have all of these different programs that are in a manufacturing, and how do you get them to talk to each other to put them on this point and click? Like in the very basic of terms, how does it work? that you know that it speeds up the process for what you were doing before as a consultant to what you can do now getting all of these different programs to talk to each other oh that's a perfect question because if you, they're all proprietary protocols and what manufacturing companies do is they'll invest in one primary vendor like Siemens or Allen Bradley or somebody and then if they bought everything from that one vendor and they used all their solutions, which is very expensive, they might be able to have a plug and play factory. But what, but the reality is you, they need to buy equipment that does the job to make whatever they're making. And that equipment has all these 
proprietary protocols in them that are binary, low-level protocols where you have to say this little bit means this bit means that. And this bit means there's an alert. This bit means the machine's stopping. This bit means it's starting. And then you have to go gather all those bits and, and convert them. It's super expensive and proprietary. So how do you get that into a standard way? What we do is on our product is we get we create drivers that can talk to the Siemens protocols or the Allen Bradley protocols. And, and then the industry, knowing that this is a real problem with all these proprietary protocols that lock you into a vendor, that make it hard and expensive to get data out. There's several protocols that are more open-ended. Modbus, for example, is a protocol that is pretty open-ended. It's still down at the bit level where you're tweaking this bit means that, and this number means the other thing, but it's not proprietary. So that was the first step. And then vendors said, now we need to be more self-describing. So let's use a protocol like OPC UA where we can, you can ask the machine, so what data do you have? And it'll come back with a list. Oh, I have temperature. I have air pressure. I have whatever it is, stamper frequency numbers. And, and then you say, okay, I'm interested in stamper frequency. How often are you stamping? So I want to see how productive my equipment is. I want to see if it's producing at a high rate, if it's slowing down or getting you know old. And so I want the stamper frequency number. And then with OpenCUA, you just say, okay, give me the stamper frequency. And then you can it'll send it over or you can pull and say, every 10 minutes, you can go get the number every two seconds, whatever you need to do. So the industry has evolved from these proprietary protocols to some more generic ones like Modbus to some more open ones like OPC UA that tag the data and you can ask it questions. But it turns out OPC UA, as good as it is, is very expensive because it is so cool. And vendors who it takes, it's very hard to implement an OPC UA feature into your product. If you're selling a piece of equipment to implement that in is super expensive. So they pass that right on to the, to the factory and say, you're going to pay more for OPC UA. But Faircom, what we do is we provide drivers that allow you to connect to your native protocols so you don't have to buy the expensive OPC UA solution if you don't already have it. But we also connect to OPC UA when you do have it. Some equipment is going now evolving to produce MQTT messages. And MQTT is a new protocol that is transforming the whole manufacturing world because it's open source, it's standard. And it, so it's not proprietary and it uses, it's really flexible. And most people send JSON messages over it. And JSON is a simple way of human readable messages that you can just format them and, and say temperature is 71 degrees. You can just, and you, humans can read it, machines can read it. So we can troubleshoot it in the factory and you can push messages around. You can say, uh, it's like email or Twitter. It's like saying, publish a message, and then anyone who wants that topic can subscribe to the topic and get it, just like a podcast. If you want the podcast, you subscribe. If you don't get it, that's what MQTT does. That model is game-changing for, for manufacturing. And some equipment is starting to support MQTT as well, and it, MQTT is taking over the industry. So what we do is we built into our product. We have an MQTT broker built right in. We have all these drivers to these proprietary protocols built in. So you just go into our product and you say, okay, connect to that device using this protocol. We automatically gather the data. We convert it to JSON and we can deliver that data to any other protocol. So we have this like universal translator that just gathers data from any protocol and sends it to any other protocol. So it's, and we use techniques that no one else can do because we have our embedded database inside. Because we have a, we're a database company. Right. So when it comes to, would this be a low code platform then? You had yeah. mentioned something before about low code. So what is that in the scheme of things? Oh, yeah. Like I said before, I spent, a, it was high code. If you hired me to go go convert data out of a machine, I had to write a lot of code to do it. I have to use a programming language. And it would take a ton of code, and that's why it's so expensive. Low code means all that heavy lifting's been done for you. Faircom has done the heavy lifting. We've written all that hard code once in these drivers. We've written all the hard code to convert it to a universal um, communication format, like JSON and standard structures. We've done all that hard work. And so now it's just a, a point of putting a user interface on it, and you point and click. So low code means 
point and click is actually no code. Right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so you can just point and click and say, okay, connect to this. It's like I have a temperature sensor. I want to connect to it. And I can say, that talks Modbus. Okay, so I'll just go point and click and say, connect to this sensor using Modbus. I'm interested in the temperature. Now convert that from Celsius to Fahrenheit, point, click, point, click, point, click. And then now send it over MQTT so that somebody can subscribe to the topic of temperature on, on my temperature sensor. And so point, click, point, click. And you've got that whole thing configured in minutes instead of paying someone like me $30,000 to $50,000, $100,000 to go write all that code, to go make a point point-to-point -point solution to get it in your MES, bring it into our hub. And from our hub, it can go anywhere in a universal format. So we've built a universal translator, all these protocols, all these drivers, um, all these technologies like MQTT, OPC, all that's built in and a database, of course. And we even have an application server built in there so it can support web applications. So you can do point and click. So it's yeah. really easy. Well, and you've mentioned a couple of them, but what are some of the protocols that can be supported by this type of manufacturing integration platform? Yeah, the ones we support today are MQTT, OPC UA, Modbus, Allen Bradley, Ethernet IP, Siemens S7. We support SQL for the IT folks the JSON protocols over HTTP, so all your RESTful kind of things. And we support, we also support pushing data to REST endpoints. So the IT world needs all this data too that's stuck in manufacturing. We have the three number one technologies IT needs to get data out. And that's the SQL, the REST, and the MQTT because they use all three techniques. So we have that. And then we have ThingWorks integration as well. And we're building more protocols all the time. So if you're working with a manufacturer and you're talking to them about using an integration platform because they can reduce their integration costs four times and all of that, and, ba and basically you go in speaking the language of IT, which is probably terrifying <laughs> to most manufacturing. Yeah. So how do you put it in simplified terms that people would understand, listen, we've been spending a lot of money on this. We want to reduce our integration costs. This sounds like a good thing, but how would we get started? And more importantly, how would we take the fear out of all this technology stuff that nobody except IT people understand? First off, the point is we could connect to your equipment. Whatever protocols you have, we usually we have a protocol that supports most equipment. And there's even hardware devices you can plug into equipment that convert protocols. If we don't support the exact, there's hundreds of protocols that equipment have. If we don't support the exact one your equipment has, you can plug in these little hardware dongles that convert it to OPC UA or MQTT or Modbus. So it's very easy to get the data. So we just say, plug, plug it. We'll plug into your equipment. We'll get the equipment out. And don't even talk to worry about IT because we talk their language. Our universal translator, our hub, automatically gets it to IT. You don't even have to worry about IT. It they in fact, here's the key point. IT's been begging you for data forever. We have the solution. You don't even have to worry about IT. You just say, we've got a hub that auto translates from our stuff that we understand in the manufacturing world to all that IT stuff. And the IT stuff, that guys, they know how to talk IT things and they can come to our equipment and, we, and our, our product and they go, oh, you've got SQL? Awesome. I know how to use that. Oh, you've got REST? Oh, I know how to use that. you got MQTT? Oh, I know how to use that. So they don't even need help. They can just, the data is just sitting there in our product and they come and get it and it's, they love it. Finally, we freed the data. And that's the key point here. Instead of hiring people like me to go to point and now you're locked in, we free the data out, we bring it into our hub, and then anyone can come and get it, and we can push the data anywhere we need to push it. So you can worry, you can forget about IT. And the other part is you don't need IT to make this work. So mm -hmm. that's one of the key things about Faircom. We've been in business for 40 years building lights out systems that just work. A high performance, high volume no maintenance, just plug it in and it just works. In fact, that's the biggest complaint some of our customers have is that it's worked for so long, they forget 
They get scared. What if something happened? How do I fix it? It's been working for seven years and I've never touched it. If you think about it, that's actually scary because if it goes wrong, what do we do? We have no one. It's just the good thing is Faircon knows how it works. And if you have any support, we support you beautifully yeah. and we fix it. And that's not an issue. But that's how we roll. And so IT doesn't need to come in and install our product. It installs just, you just unzip and run it. It's just, it just works. You just unzip, run, point and click, and it's all doing the job for you. So it's super easy to install, to maintain, and you can do it in your factory without IT. But then IT can come get the data. So what about from a security standpoint? I know that there's dangers to the cloud with ransomware and the cyber criminals knowing what the cloud is, that they can break into that. If you have an integration platform that's so basically easy to use, plug and play, does that make it more susceptible to security or how do you protect it so that the criminals can't get to it? Awesome question. So... You're right in that if we, if you could all your data into one place, that's one place for a hacker to go and steal the data, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to secure it. And so what we do by default, everything is secure. We have built-in encryption, encryption at rest. So all the data that we're collecting in our database is encrypted on disk. So if they were to steal the machine it ran on, they couldn't use it because they wouldn't, they couldn't see the data is all encrypted on disk. They couldn't get to it. And we use the highest levels of, of encryption. So it's you can't break it. You can't hack into that. We also use encryption in transit. So the same technology that you use on the web to protect HTTPS in your browser, if you type HTTPS and it's secure, right. HTTP, that technology is the exact technology we use for all of our communications. So it's all encrypted. And, with, and we use certificates. And certificates are like this black art that no one understands. But... We figured that art out and we've created a super simple system for you. You just can just, again, point and click and you've got certificates. You just deploy them. You don't have to know how they work. We have solved that problem for you. So you can just put certificates where they need to go and everything is secure, truly secure. So we've solved the security issues through encryption and making it easy for you to implement it. So you don't need to hire IT to come in and do it either. You just. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and how would somebody know that they. How would they even know that they needed this service or what would be some good questions to, um, to ask to decide that this was something worth looking at? What problems are they experiencing now that would make it worth a conversation because you could solve that? Yeah, one of the things is you have every man, every factory needs to get more efficiency out of their equipment and tracking overall equipment efficiency or OEE is huge and it's expensive and it's very hard to do. We just recently worked with one of the largest automobile manufacturers in the United States and they're one of our customers and they're trying to improve o overall equipment efficiency in their factories. And of course, these are huge factories, right? With thousands of people and thousands of equipment. And so the challenge is to improve over, overall equipment efficiency, you have to get data. And to get data out of the machine, you have to go gather it. And again, that means hiring someone expensive to go and custom stuff. But with an integration platform like Faircom's IoT platform, Faircom Edge, you just plug it in, point and click, you're gathering the data. Now, for the other part, once you gather the data, you need to run it through analytics. There's formulas that calculate overall equipment efficiency. And you need to have, you need to run it through the formulas and we have the formulas. You can just plug them in and then run them. And now you're getting, now you get the efficiency numbers. Now you can start comparing over time, is this piece of equipment getting more efficient or less efficient? Mm. Or if these operators are running it, are they running it more efficiently or less efficiently? So do we have an operator problem? Do we have a machine problem? And so that you can, by gathering the data, with point and click, you can now afford to get the data and use it in efficient ways, like measuring equipment efficiency. You can then, since you are gathering the data, people have problems displaying. They, they want to display to the operators these problems, like alerts. And right now, getting the data out of equipment and loading into SCADA systems or other systems on the at the manufacturing station where they're doing the work is expensive. But with a product like Faircom Edge, you just gather the data with point and click and you just pump it wherever you need to go. 
We integrate with Node-RED, which is a really wonderful open source solution. And we t- we're tightly integrated with Node-RED and it, it creates, da- Node-RED can create dashboards for users. It can create graphs and charts. It can run workflow scenarios. So it's the new way, Node-RED is the new way for manufacturers for free, because you don't have to buy Node-RED. You can build all kinds of amazing solutions with low code. Node-RED is low code. It's not okay. no code. It's still some code. Right. But it's low code. And with Node-RED, and, but Node-RED doesn't have a database. With our product, we have the database. We have all these integration features. Point and click on our product, work with Node-RED, build workflows, build charts, build dashboards right there for the system very inexpensively. Because the data is free now for you to use it. It's, we've unlocked it out of the proprietary world that Siemens and Alan Bradley and other vendors have locked it into. So you have to buy their products to solve the problem. That's the whole point is we're in an open world with open standards. And now you can use free things, inexpensive things like Faircom Edge to solve problems that were super expensive before. Improving quality, that's another thing. The, the data, the quality of your product, you need data to do that. And again, so this Faircom Edge unlocks the data. Your personnel costs. Again, you can replace expensive programmers every time you a new piece of data. You don't have to hire a programmer. You can use, you can just point and click in Faircom Edge and get the data. Getting data, ERP systems, they need data. I've been in so many manufacturing companies where the, the CEO is going, you guys are terrible. You will not give me the data I need to run the company. I need to know inventory management. I need to know overall equipment effectiveness. I need to know all these things. And that's data-driven. And I need that data in my ERP. And who runs the ERP? The IT group. And IT Mm -hmm. can't get data out of OT because they talk two different languages. They're two different worlds. But Faircom Edge bridges that world. So all you do is plug us in, gather the data. Now the data can flow right into your ERP system. And so we finally freed the data to get where it needs to go. Okay, awesome. As we're getting to the end of our time together, if somebody did want to connect with you and continue the conversation, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so you can visit faircom.com and we have all the links to connect to everybody. You can download our product, you can read about it, you can get late, the latest ideas and updates about all these manufacturing things. You can you can even just email support at faircom.com and and we're all very responsive. We have the best support in the industry. And so if you have any questions, just you can ask questions right to support. You can also email sales if you want to. Sale, our sales guys are actually engineers, so they're actually more helpful than selling, but they do try to sell you. So if you don't want to talk to sales, you can just talk to support. Come to our website. You can contact us. We're engineers. We love to help our customers solve problems. That's what I am. That's what our whole company is, a bunch of engineers that solve problems. All right. Well, Mike, it has been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure. I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Manufacturers Network Podcast. Do me a favor and share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow this network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either send your buddies to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the Manufacturers Network podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. The bigger and faster we grow the network, the stronger and deeper the community will all have. Thanks again, and I appreciate you.